if the diagram shows two resistors in series, calculate the potential difference across both resistors and the current through them. The internal resistance is negligible. Okay, so there's many ways to do this. I'm going to start off by using the total resistance method. So because these two are, are in series, I just add up the total resistance, which is 300 ohms. Okay, and then I'm going to use ohms law V equals IR, but I'm going to apply it to the, to the whole circuit as a whole. So total voltage is six, and the current, I don't know, I'm just going to figure that out. And the total resistance here is 300. So if I rearrange that, I get IT is equal to six over 300, which is going to give me 0 0.02 amps. And because this is the series circuit, that's 0. Um, 0.02 amps is going to flow through both of these resistors. So it's going to be 0 0.02 amps through this and 0 0.02 amps through that. Now I know the current through both and I also know the resistance. That means I can apply Ohm's law to the individual components. So V equals IR for this. V equals I, which is 0 0.02 times the R for this, which is 100. That gives me 2 volts. I don't even need to do the calculation for the next one because I know the total has to add up to 6. Okay, so if this is 2 volts, this must be 4. However, I'm just going to do the calculation anyway. I'm going to V, I'm going to apply over to this one, which is the I is 0 0.02 times the resistance, which is 200. And again, I get 4 volts, adding up to 6. Okay, so this is the same question, but I'm going to find the PD by thinking about it differently. I know that the potential difference will be shared in the ratio of the resistance of the component. So in this case, a ratio of 100 to 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the total voltage, 6, 6 volts, and I'm going to chop it up into 300 pieces because that's the total resistance. And I'm going to give 100 of those pieces to the 100 ohm resistor. That's going to give me 2 volts. Okay, so same thing again. Take the 6 volts, chop it into 300 pieces, and take 200 of those pieces for the 200 ohm resistor, that gives me 4 volts. Okay, this equation is basically just what I did right here. It says take the total voltage, okay, divided by the total resistance, and then multiply by the resistance of a particular resistor to get that to get the voltage across that resistor. So if I wanted it, I could do uh, the second resistor, and I'll get the voltage across the second resistor. The diagram shows a resistor and a filament bulb in series with an 8 volt cell with negligible internal resistance. The voltmeter reads 5 volts. Calculate the current through that meter and the resistance of the bulb. Okay, so what information do we have? So we know this is 5 volts, so that must mean that this bulb has a potential difference of 5 volts across it. Now, we can't apply Ohm's law to this bulb just yet because we don't know its current and we don't know its resistance. We need to look for other information. So well, if this is 8 volts here, this must be 3 volts because it needs to add up to 8, 5 plus a 3. So now we know its voltage and its uh, resistance, we can work out current. So we just need to V over R, which will give us the current. So that is 3 over 10. And that means the current through this is 0 0.3 amps. Uh, that is in series with the bulb. So whatever current goes through the resistor must go through the bulb because none of it goes down the voltmeter. So if this is now, it's going to have 0 0.3 amps through this. Okay, now I know two things about it. I can work out the third thing, which is the resistance. So if I do V over I, I can work out the resistance. So V is 5 divided by 0 0.3 amps, and I get 16.7 ohms. The diagram shows a variable resistor. So that's just a resistor whose resistance we can change and a fixed resistor in series with a 5.2 volt cell with negligible internal resistance. The voltmeter reads 3 volts and the ammeter reads 0 0.25 amps. Calculate the resistance of both components. Okay, let's see what we can apply Ohm's law to. So I know that this, if this is 3 volts here, this must be 2.2 volts because it needs to add up to 5.2 volts. Okay, what about the current through these? So if the current here is 0 0.25 amps, that means the current to the whole circuit is 0 0.25 amps, 5 amps. Okay, so now that we know the current and the voltage across each one, we can just do V divided by I to work out the resistance of this one. So if we apply it for this one, so we get 2.2 divided by 0 0.25, that gives us 8.8 .8 ohms. And this one here, the current through, uh, so we get V over I again, 
So V is 3 over 0 0.25, and that gives us 12 ohms. Describe the effect of increasing the resistance of the variable resistor on the potential difference and the current in the circuit. Okay, so we're increasing the resistance of this. So the first thing I notice is that, well, this one has a fixed resistance. And let's say, for example, that's 10 ohms. That's going to stay as 10 ohms while this one's going up. So total resistance is going to be adding them both up. So total resistance increases. Now, the total resistance goes up and the total voltage is still the same. That means the current is going to decrease. So current throughout the whole circuit will decrease. What about the potential difference? So I know the potential difference is going to be shared between these two resistors. So if the potential difference, uh, if the resistance of this one goes up, it's going to have to use more of the energy. So that means that the potential difference across this will go up. However, the total must still be constant and equal to Vt. So the voltage of this will go down. Okay, but the total will remain the same. So the potential difference of the variable resistor goes up and the potential difference of the fixed resistor goes down, but the total is still equal to the total voltage of the cell. There's another way of saying this. We can just say that the, the variable resistor will receive a larger fraction or ratio of the total potential difference.